Hey friends, welcome back. Today I am so excited to set up my brand new bullet journal for 2024 in one of the most stunning notebooks I've ever seen. B5 size vegan leather embossed with gilded edges from Archer and Olive. It is a thing of beauty <laughs> and hopefully what I create inside it lives up to the expectations set by the outside. So without further ado, let's hop right in and start setting up these spreads for the new year. So moving over to my table here and pulling out this notebook, I love everything about this. Even the end papers are gorgeous. And because the end papers are so gorgeous on this notebook, I'm not going to do what has become my tradition of a little fold out spread on the inner cover. I would hate to cover up this beautiful gilded artwork. So I'm skipping it this time around, but don't worry, I'm sure those fold out spreads will be back in my next bullet journal that doesn't have special end papers. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, check out any of my previous bullet journal setups from the past several years and you'll know exactly what I mean. Starting with the contact page and I typically just put my first name. I don't bring my bullet journal out of the house very often. So just putting Elizabeth and a little bit of art is good enough for me. But of course, if you're someone who doesn't work from home or if you're bringing your bullet journal to school or traveling a lot, you'll probably want to at least put a phone number. So if you lose it somewhere, whoever finds it can get in contact. I'm trying to continue on in a consistent aesthetic from the cover and the end pages. So I'm sticking with an orangey brown and gold aesthetic using my Winsor & Newton watercolors to mix together a nice warm brown and using my stamp set with gold ink as well as my gold watercolor to get super shiny reflective metallic gold. As always, all the supplies I'm using for the setup will be linked down below, so check out the description box. Today's video is kindly sponsored by my absolute favorite pillow brand in the whole world. And yes, I do have a favorite pillow brand. It's just the kind of thing that happens in your 30s, something to look forward to. And that brand, is Marlo. If you're unfamiliar with them, Marlo is a pillow brand designed to get you a better night's sleep. They did seven years of sleep research to figure out what people struggle with most with their pillows and with their sleep. Things like overheating, back and neck pain, and insomnia. And with that research, they built the Marlo pillow, which is so versatile, adjustable, super supportive, with cooling infused foam and breathable mesh. It's amazing. My favorite thing about the Marlo pillow is that it's adjustable. It comes with these awesome zippers on both sides which you can super easily zip closed or zip open to adjust how lofty your pillow is and how firm it is. Their recommendation is to unzip both sides for stomach sleepers, to zip both sides for side sleepers, and to zip one side for back sleepers. I'm a bit of an outlier as a side sleeper who enjoys it completely unzipped. I like something a little loftier that I can really sink into. But the great thing about the Marlowe pillow is that no matter what your preference is or what your sleep style, they got you covered. My husband and I have been sleeping exclusively on our Marlowe pillows for four or five months now and honestly, they're fantastic. Both of us love them. Even though we sleep in different positions, we have different preferences when it comes to pillows. Marlo's having their end of year sale right now. So if you wanna prioritize your sleep in the new year, make sure to take advantage of this buy more, save more deal. Buy one pillow, get 10% off. Buy two to three pillows, get 20% off. Or buy four pillows and get 30% off. Click the link below to shop the sale. And thank you so, so much to Marlo for sponsoring this video and for significantly improving my sleep. It's honestly invaluable. Moving over to our first full spread here. And I still wanted to name this bullet journal, which is something I've been doing for a couple years, inspired by my friend Caitlin over at Caitlin's Corner. And for this notebook, I really wanted to do something a bit nerdy. You know, the name of a bookworm in the early 1900s is what I was going for. So I chose the name Theodore, which I honestly think is an adorable name, especially with the nickname Theo. So I decided to use some washi tape to get a nice clean edge. This washi tape was a gift from my friend Amanda, Amanda Rachley, I'm sure you know of her, I'll link her shop down below. The only sketching I did for this spread was to sketch out the shape of a capital T in the center as a focal point for this spread. And this is just a guideline to make sure that I don't paint my leaves into that space. And you'll see why I wanna do that in a little bit as the spread comes together. I'm using a nice large round brush that comes to a point to do all these leaves. And I'm really just using a super simple technique of using the tip of the brush, that point, to draw the stem of the leaves or the branch itself. And then for each leaf, starting with the tip, then pressing the brush into the page to get a thicker line in the center and then lifting it off to get a point on the other end and using that pointed tip to 
to extend the end of the leaves and connect it to the branch if needed. I'm using a pretty wet brush. I have quite a bit of water on my brush because I do want things to be a little irregular. I want some lighter leaves and darker leaves. I want that watercolor effect to come through. So just keep in mind if you wanna try this in your own bullet journal, depending on what notebook you're using and what kind of paper it is. You might have trouble using quite as much water as I am here. Archer and Olive Paper does a really good job of holding up to watercolor, which is one of the many reasons why I keep using their notebooks year after year after year. Your mileage may vary. Definitely test it out maybe on the last page of your notebook before you commit to it. And you might find that adding a piece of paper towel behind the page you're working on helps to mitigate any issues that might come with bleeding through the page. You can also skip a page for every spread and when every things done and dry, glue those pages together to stop any warping of the page from the water affecting the spread on the other side. What? What is it? Hmm? You have a lot to say. So as I said, I'm just filling the entire space within the washi tape with leaves and I'm trying to vary their direction, just fit everything in together. I don't want too many large gaps, again, with the exception of the interior of this capital T that I sketched out. So while I'm focusing on full sprigs or you know a branch with several leaves on it, if there are any open gaps that are a little bit too large, I am adding just individual leaves in those areas just to fill it in so there's no obvious gaps or weird spaces. I didn't plan this out ahead of time. I'm just kind of going with the flow, <laughs> but you could do even just a miniature version, sketching out how things are gonna fit together if you feel the pressure of trying to freehand something like this. I totally understand that feeling. I didn't want to sketch this out ahead of time because if you use watercolor on top of pencil, you can't erase the pencil anymore. And I really didn't want it to end up looking messy. So, so I just took the plunge. As I start to finish the leaves here, you can see what I was going for with the gap for the capital T. And I'm also adding some leaves on the right hand side, which is going to end up being my key just behind where the K is gonna go. Now that the first layer of watercolor is dry, I'm going in with my gold watercolor and just adding a nice thick outline to this letter. I also used my stamps with my gold ink to stamp out Theodore underneath the T and just went back over that ink with my gold watercolor and a fine brush to get extra shine because even though the gold ink is a nice color, it just doesn't have the same intense reflective quality as this gold watercolor. So I just had to <laughs> go back over it with the watercolor. Y'all know me, I'm very picky about my golds. I want them to be as shiny as possible. <laughs> I also did the same thing on the key spray Red, so I painted the outline of the K with my gold watercolor and went over the E and Y stamps. And then I just used a black pen to add my key underneath that. I use a simple bullet for tasks. I use a square for work and I use a circle for events or appointments that are specific to a certain time. Moving over to the next spread here, this is going to be a little bit of a cover page, a 2024 splash page, I guess, on the right and a bit of a fun bonus spread on the left, which is going to be 24 in 2024. I thought it would be fun to pick 24 things to do in this next year to either push me outside of my comfort zone or try to encourage me to do things I've been meaning to do for a long time and just never getting around to leaving my house more often and engaging with my community. So I had fun putting together this list. And if you decide to do something like this in your bullet journal, you can of course make a list of whatever works for your life, whatever you're trying to work on or whatever is important to you. For the 2024 splash page, I'm doing something very similar to the Theodore page where I'm boxing out a rectangle and filling it with leaves, just leaving gaps for the numbers. But on the left side for the 24 in 2024 spread, I'm just adding a couple sprigs of leaves behind the big 24. I 
Again, once that first layer of watercolors dry, I'm going in with my gold watercolor and adding a nice thick outline to 24 on the left side and 2024 20, on the right. I'm also using my stamps to add in 2024 20, underneath that big 24 and of course going over top of that with my gold watercolor once again. decided to add 24 little boxes that I could fill in every time I completed one of these tasks. So the 24 things I decided to add to my list were going to a concert, sewing a garment, knitting a sweater, taking a yoga class in person specifically because I do yoga a lot from home, going to a movie, bake bread. I've been meaning to learn how to bake my own bread for years and I've been too intimidated to try it. So 2024 is my year. Volunteering locally, attend a local LGBTQIA plus event, going for coffee with a new friend, FaceTiming an old friend, joining a local in-person book club, planting a veggie garden, even if it's only a very tiny one, going ice skating, getting a massage, taking a luxurious bath. And by luxurious, I mean making a whole evening out of it decluttering the house, donating a bag of clothes, organizing the house, repairing and tailoring my clothes, finishing the kitchen, teaching the cats to use their buttons. I'm not gonna go into great detail into what this means, but if you wanna know generally what I'm talking about, check out Fluent Pet. If you've ever wanted to be able to understand what your animals are trying to say to you, this is for you. This was my main gift from my husband for Christmas, and I'm very committed to trying to train my cats to use them. Getting my splits, again. <laughs> Taking a dance class, again, I dance a lot at home, but I'd love to do an in-person dance class in 2024. And last but not least, say yes, even if I'm afraid. I try to be kind to myself if I don't feel comfortable with a certain situation. I've gotten to a point where I'm okay with saying no, but I do worry sometimes, especially now that I work from home and after the pandemic and just spending so much time at home that I have gotten really comfortable with saying no and spending a lot of time by myself at home or just with my husband and our cats. So I wanted to challenge myself to at least once during the year, say yes and do something, even if it scares me and just go for it because I think that's healthy. I think that's good for us to do. So those are my 24 things. Hopefully that gives you some ideas if you wanna try a spread like this in your bullet journal. But I would also love to know if you have a similar spread or if you're making one, what kinds of things are on your list. You don't have to share the whole thing, but if there's a couple you wanna share, I would really love to read them. Moving on to my next spread, which is the infinitely practical future log. This is a necessity for me to be able to plan out my life past the current month that I already have set up in my bullet journal. I tend to double up things both in my calendar on my phone and on my future log as a bit of a fail safe, a backup. So I hopefully don't forget anything important, but this is where I can put people's birthdays, trips that are coming up, holidays, appointments, big deadlines, whatever it may be. If you wanna see how I use a future log, check out one of my full bullet journal flip throughs. I'll have my most recent one linked down below.
next two spreads are a little bit more goal oriented. I decided to make a quarterly goals spread with space for quarter one and quarter two. And on the right side, I decided to make a monthly challenges spread where I could set myself a monthly challenge that was in line with one of my quarterly goals to really focus on each month to help me achieve those goals. Let me just explain with an example because I feel like that will make more sense. So my quarter one goals are doing a no buy, prioritizing active rest, and building a basic recipe repertoire. So looking at the no buy, for example, I've set myself some rules for what this involves, basically no buy on anything except for replacing necessities. And I've defined what necessities mean to me. So because that's one of my quarterly goals, my monthly challenge for January is going to be no buy. And that means basically I'm trying to start off the year strong with my no buy. So for January, I'm going to be focusing on it every single day and I'm going to be filling in probably with my light beige Tombow every day that I don't buy anything. And my goal is that I will achieve every single day a no buy for anything but necessities and be able to fill in the entire calendar with that light beige Tombow. And that hopefully will get me in the groove of things so that for the rest of quarter one, it's a little bit easier. And then for February, for example, my monthly challenge is going to be yoga. So that is something that's contributing to my larger quarter one goal of prioritizing active rest. So not so much rest that's just lounging on the couch, scrolling on Reddit for hours, but rest that actually helps me to feel better like a daily yoga practice. So in February, I will attempt to do yoga every single day, even if it's only five minutes, 10 minutes. And again, hopefully that will help me to build up a bit of a habit that will aid me in achieving that larger quarterly goal. And in March, my monthly challenge is going to be recipe testing. I'm going to try, definitely not daily, but maybe a couple nights a week, trying a new recipe, really pushing myself to find those staple recipes that I can continue to recreate time and time again. So that's how this works. I'm not setting my quarter two goals yet because I wanna see how quarter one goes and how I'm feeling a couple months into the year, but somewhere maybe mid-March, I will sit down and set my quarter two goals and then I'll assign monthly challenges for April, May, and June that correlate to my quarter two goals. Flipping over to the next page, these are my final two spreads. On the left side is going to be my period tracker and on the right side, my waiting on spread. These are classics. I've done them in my bullet journal for years and they're spreads that I use a lot. I highly recommend a period tracker for anyone who menstruates. I use an app to track my period as well. I use Clue, but I also love to have a year at a glance visual representation of my cycles and see how they're doing. Are they super regular? Are they very regular? How often are certain symptoms popping up? And I really like this basic spread where each day of each month is just assigned a dot and I add a larger dot, usually in another color. So in this case, it'll be in gold for the days that I'm menstruating. I circle the dot on the day that I ovulate. And then I've assigned three symptoms to either a diagonal to the right, diagonal to the left, or an X through a dot. And that way I can track those three different symptoms very easily and visually very quickly be able to see when each symptom is happening. You could of course color code this you could use a bunch of different symbols. You could do a square and a circle and a triangle pointed each direction. So there's so many different ways that you could utilize this really basic framework of a spread, but this is how I like to use it. It's how I've been using it for years and it really helps me to see how my cycle is doing at a glance. So again, if you wanna see what the spread looks like when it's been used, check out one of my bullet journal flip through videos. Again, I'll have one linked down below so you can see what I mean. And the final spread, my waiting on spread. This is just where I track packages that I'm waiting for so I can make sure to follow up because I do have many packages coming in. I like to try to track everything because I do have experiences where I forget about something and it's been months and I didn't realize it didn't come. And then it's a whole hassle to try to chase it down and figure out what happened. It's much easier to have an area where I have each item described and I have the estimated delivery date and I can just check in every once in a while. Thank you again to Marlo for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to click the link in my description box to shop their end of year sale, where if you buy more, you save more. Buy one pillow, save 10%, buy two to three pillows, save 20%, or buy four pillows and save 30%. Click the link below to shop the sale. Thank you so much again to Marlo for sponsoring this video and for improving my sleep. I cannot thank you enough.
I'm really excited that I have a mix of my tried and true practical spreads, some of my classic, more decorative spreads, and also some new fun goal-oriented or even challenge-oriented spreads that can help me move in the direction I want to be going in in 2024 in terms of personal development and achieving my goals and pushing myself outside of my comfort zone. So hopefully you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. I post a new plan with me every single month in my bullet journal, and I have years and years of backlog content, tips for different types of spreads, videos for helping you start your very first bullet journal, years and years of monthly plan with me's with more themes than I could even remember off the top of my head. So definitely check out my bullet journal playlists. I'll have them linked in the description box if you want more bullet journal content. And with that, I think I'm gonna get going. Thanks so much for watching this video. Thanks for sticking with me through 2023. And I hope you had an amazing 2023 and that 2024 brings you so much joy and happiness and success and love because you all deserve it. So thank you to my patrons for your support. Without you, I could not do this. I appreciate you all so much. And with that, I'm gonna get going. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you really soon in my next one in the new year in 2024. Bye friends.